In this Chimp tutorial, we will cover timecode and look at the tracking backup features of the Chimp console. There are a number of methods to send timecode to the Chimp. You can choose between SEMT or MTC, short for MIDI timecode. You can also use the console's internal generator to trigger shows. This is especially useful when pre programming a show. To access the timecode settings, press the Setup button. Via the Input slash Output button, you can find the Timecode Input tab. You can connect the timecode hardware to the chimp via a 3-pin XLR or a MIDI cable. In the Timecode Input tab, you can adjust several settings. In the Timecode Source drop-down, you can choose which timecode source the chimp should respond to. If you select Internal Generator, the chimp generates its own timecode and responds to this source. If MIDI timecode is selected, the chimp will listen to an external MIDI timecode source through the MIDI port on the back of the console. When SEMTI timecode is selected, the chimp listens to an external analog timecode source through the XLR port on the back of the console. With MIDI and SEMTI, you can adjust settings such as frame rate and start and stop times in the external hardware. If the internal generator is selected, you can adjust these values yourself. The frame rate drop down menu allows you to set the number of frames per second. If the loop button is activated, the timecode generator will restart the clock from the start time when the stop time is reached. You can set the start and end point of the internal timecode generator at start time and stop time. Reset to start time resets the clock to the start time. These buttons are also located at the top center of the screen for easy access. There are two ways to add the trigger times of a timecode in a queue list. Press Edit and select a queue list. Navigate to the queue list view tab. By selecting a cell in the trigger column and then pressing Set, you can select the trigger timecode. The trigger time now changes to an hour, minute, second frame format. Here you can enter the exact trigger time for this queue. Another way to teach the console trigger times is by using the learn timing function. Note that all queues you want to trigger via timecode must be in timecode mode. We navigate to the queue list settings tab. It is important that you activate the timecode by pressing the timecode enabled button at the top of the screen. Press the learn timing button. The screen now switches to the queue list view. By pressing go, you teach the correct times to the console, after which it takes over the times and enters them as a trigger time. In the queue list settings menu, under timecode mode, you can choose whether the list should be triggered by go queue or go to queue. When go queue is selected, the console will only trigger forwards in the timecode list. If go to queue is selected, the console can also trigger backwards in the queue list. You can activate or deactivate the timecode through several commands. You can also reset the internal generator via commands. Tracking backup. Chimp consoles can be linked with each other via tracking backup. In this way, you can expand the capabilities of the console or copy a show into a backup session. These options allow you to link two consoles in a network. To access the network settings menu, press the network button at the top of the bar. In this screen, we select the tab networking. Here, you can select all the consoles in the network. You can choose which console should be the master and which the slave in the network. It is important to note that only the master console will generate DMX signals and that the slave console will not generate any DMX signals as long as it's configured as a slave within the network. Any hardware to extend the total universe count, such as a peanut box, chimp dongle for on PC or banana wing, should be connected to the master console. 
If you choose to run a tracking backup function, the slave console should have similar hardware configuration in order to take over all the universes if the master console fails. You can see all the information of the consoles present in the network. IP address, device type, software version number, network status and show status can all be read in the center window. By selecting a console in the center window and then pressing connect as tracking backup, you will enable the link. It is important to note that the console initiating the link automatically becomes the slave console. We press connect as tracking backup. On both consoles, a pop-up window will inform you that the consoles have been added to a network session and what their role is. From the slave console, you can choose which mode the console is in. Multi-user gives you your own programmer on the slave console that functions independently of the programmer on the master console. All page, workspace and fader page changes can be done independently. Extended UI allows you to use the slave console as a hardware wing. You can choose a different fader page on both consoles, but the programmer is shared on both consoles. Mirror mode is a full backup mode and mirrors the settings from the master console to the slave console. This way, both consoles copy all the actions that happen on both consoles. So if there is a malfunction on the master unit, you can easily switch to the slave console and continue the show where you left off. In the event of losing the backup link or it being deactivated by one of the two consoles, you will always be notified by a pop-up screen that the link has been disabled. Thanks for watching.